just lost our one. Like our friends got in. Hey Will, what's going on? I'm a little busy right now. Hey guys, I was just wondering, weren't we supposed to do the Galaxy's Edge video today? Sorry Will, I have to go. Talk to Luz. Hey, I just wanted to know, are we doing the Galaxy's Edge video today? Hey Will, no, Jerry from Disney Examiner is gonna help us out today. Okay guys, see you next week. Hey guys, I'll take it from here. Star Wars Galaxy's Edge was announced at the D23 Expo 2015. This land is the largest single themed land ever created in a Disney park. We're creating a jaw-dropping new world that represents our largest single themed land expansion ever. The attractions, the entertainment, and everything else will be part of the land's storytelling and nothing or no one will be out of character. The planet portrayed by the land is called Batu. It is located in the Outer Rim. This planet was first mentioned in the 2018 Star Wars novel Thrawn Alliances. Batu is home to Black Spire Outpost, an infamous port of smugglers, traders, and adventurers that was mentioned briefly in Solo, A Star Wars Story. Please don't start. Oh, what? You'll have me wiped? You couldn't get from here to Black Spire without me. Now you're gonna make the Kessel run? The attractions. Get ready to fulfill your dream of flying the Millennium Falcon, climb aboard the fastest hunk of junk in the galaxy, and take complete control of the ship. The story behind this attraction is that Hondo Onaka, the notorious space pirate from Clone Wars and Rebels, the Star Wars TV series, has convinced Chewbacca to let him use the Millennium Falcon to smuggle goods. The problem is, is that he needs a crew, and that's where guests come in. The queue line starts at the maintenance hangar of Onaka Transport Solutions, where we see the full-sized Falcon parked outside. Here, we find Hondo, who tells us the story of the attraction. As soon as we get to the front of the line, we will be split into groups of six and given boarding passes. That's when we enter the Falcon. The waiting area is a perfectly recreated replica of the inside of the Millennium Falcon, as we see in the movies, the Jarek table, and all. We will be free to roam the cabin while we wait for our turn to enter the cockpit. After a while, an operator will call out the number of each group, and that's when we enter the cockpit. The cockpit is filled with lights, buttons, interactive switches, and screens. Each guest will have a job. There will be two pilots, two gunners, two engineers, and the group will need to work together to ensure that the Falcon completes the mission. If the gunner misses the TIE Fighter and the Falcon suffers damage, the engineers will have to fix it. That's just one example of how the group will have to work together. As soon as the ride ends, Honda will grade the group's performance and give us a cut of the earnings, depending on how well the mission went, and our reputation as a smuggler will follow us everywhere, depending on the mission. Star Wars Rise of the Resistance If you think Smuggler's Run sounds impressive, wait till you hear about Rise of the Resistance. This ride is one of the most advanced and immersive experiences ever created by Walt Disney Imagineering. The most epic attraction we've ever built, Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. This attraction is set in a military outpost that the Resistance has set up. We enter a path that takes us to the caves. These caves are ruins of ancient civilizations mixed with Resistance tech. Then, when we enter the heart of the Resistance command, an animatronic BB-8 appears. He brings a special message from Rey who appears as a hologram and tells us about a mission guided by Poe Dameron that we're going to be a part of. A door opens and only about 50 guests go in. We walk past Poe's full-sized X-Wing and into a transport flown by an animatronic Neebnub, the alien co-pilot who helped Lando Calrissian blow up the second Death Star. We take off, but not long after, the transport is intercepted by a First Order destroyer. A tractor beam pulls the transport into the destroyer. And when the doors open, guests are standing in a giant, auditorium-sized First Order hangar, where we will find at least 50 stormtroopers. Some animatronic, and some are props. A full-size First Order TIE fighter on the wall, and a 100-foot screen showing all the action that's happening outside in deep space. We are greeted by First Order officials and quickly taken down the hallways into detention cells. We'll be divided into groups of 16 people. While we're inside this cell, we're visited by none other than Kylo Ren. We're not sure what he says or does, but we don't stay here long. After we're out, we'll finally board the ultra-advanced trackless cars that will take us through the Star Destroyer. There are not many details of what happens during this part of the attraction, 
but what we do know is that we will see some full-sized AT-ATs and some never-before-seen special effects like actual laser blasts flying through the air. Merchandise. The market of Black Spire Outpost is home to many stores that sell lots of exciting and unusual things. Droid Depot. Here we'll be able to build our own droids, picking parts and pieces from a conveyor belt. There will be two available series to choose from, the R series and the BB series. This droid will be able to interact with the surroundings and elements of the land, and it will be entirely radio controlled. There will also be additional programming chips and accessories to personalize the droid even more. For example, if a droid is made to be afraid of stormtroopers, it might make some noise and show fear when a stormtrooper comes close to it. Also, droids might recognize each other if they're owned by members of the same group. The Droid Depot will also have pre-built droids like R2-D2, BB-8, C-3PO, and even Rex, who will play whatever music you ask him to, using an intergalactic Bluetooth connection. Savi's Workshop. Hand-built lightsabers. We don't know how, but Imagineers are promising that they have found a way to make lightsabers real. That's right, we will be able to purchase our own lightsabers at Galaxy's Edge, and not only that, but we will be able to build them, too. A group known as the Gatherers have dedicated their lives to balancing the Force, and they want us to help us do so by building these lightsabers. So they set up a secret lightsaber shop packed with unusual parts. They will help build us our own one-of-a-kind lightsaber and bring it to life through the power of kyber crystals. There are four main themes to choose from. Peace and justice. Power and control. Elemental nature. Protection and defense. We're not sure how it will all work yet, but we do know that only 14 people will be able to step inside the shop at a time. So we'll probably have to make a reservation in advance, but don't worry, the experience only lasts 15 minutes. The cost of the handle is said to be around $109, and the blade itself will cost $49.99. Creature Stall At this exotic shop, you're free to explore as you peek into cages and crates filled with hard-to-find species from across the galaxy. Bina, the stall's proprietor, scours star systems to keep this storefront stocked with unique companions for her customers. Many of these creatures are interactive, and they react when you pet them. We can find Tauntauns, Wampas, Porgs, and many more. Toydarian Toymaker This shop is owned by Zabaka, the Toydarian. In this shop, we'll find lots of artisanal toys made by her. She has doll renditions of Kylo Ren, Rey, Chewbacca, and more. We can also find wood and tin toys along with some musical instruments. Every toy is carefully crafted by Zabaka, who we can see working through the frosted back window of her workshop. Doc Ondor's Den of Antiquities. Doc Ondor is an art and archaeology dealer. His shop is located in Black Spire Outpost, and here we are going to be able to find all kinds of collectibles. Not all of them will be for sale, like the life-size taxidermied wampa he has against the wall, but most of them will be for sale, like many statues of Sith and Jedi, as well as holocron cubes containing the wisdom of the light and the dark side, rare kyber crystals, and different historical lightsabers. There will also be three clothing stores where we will find the galaxy's latest fashion. Black Spire Outfitters will be located at the market. Here, we'll be able to mix and match all types of galactic clothing so we can blend in perfectly. The Resistance Supply will be located near the forest area where the Resistance is situated. Here we will find lots of Resistance gear, from clothing to pins, badges, hats, and more so we can show that we have joined the Resistance. The First Order Cargo will be located in the First Order section and will let you show that you are part of the 709 Legion. The area will also have pins, model ships, hats, and more. Food and Drinks there will be five main places to get food, drinks, and snacks in Galaxy's Edge. Oga's Cantina. This local watering hole is the place where smugglers, bounty hunters, and pilots come from all over the galaxy to have a drink and relax. You can choose from many exotic beverages. Some of these drinks will contain alcohol, which is a first for Disneyland since alcohol was not permitted in the park before. These drinks will have to be consumed inside the cantina so there won't be people walking around with their drinks outside of it. These drinks include Bespin Fizz, the cantina's version of a cosmopolitan, the Outer Rim or Margarita, Yub Nub, which is a rum punch, and many more. But don't worry, there are other non-alcoholic drinks also, like the Black Spire Brew, which is like spicy coffee, 
Blue Bantha, the blue milk we have all wanted to try, Carbon Freeze, Cliff Dweller. The coolest thing about this cantina is that we get to see one of our favorite characters back. R2, light speed to a door. DJ R3X, formerly known as Captain Rex, from Star Tours, will be DJing and providing musical entertainment inside of the cantina. This looks like a great place to hang out, but be careful, there might be some stormtroopers visiting from time to time. Docking Bay 7, Food and Cargo. This is the place to eat. Chef Strano Cookie Tugs created a quick service restaurant where he serves some of the most exotic foods that you can find at Black Spire Outpost. He used to work in Maz Kanata's palace before it was destroyed and travels across the galaxy to find exotic ingredients to cook with. Here you can find fried Endorian tipyip, smoked kadu ribs, or yob shrimp noodle salad. Ronto Roasters. Around the marketplace, we will find Ronto Roasters, a place run by a character named Bakar and his droid 8DJ8. This place will use a large pod racing engine to fire up a barbecue pit for Ronto sandwiches. There will also be non-alcoholic drinks. Milk Stand. The milk stand will offer two local favorites, blue milk and green milk. This drink is a plant-based, non-dairy creation that is almost like a frozen smoothie with berry and melon flavors. Cat Saka's Kettle. This place is owned by a local Batu farmer that collects spices. He uses them on Outpost Mix, the equivalent of popcorn on our planet. There are many flavors to choose from. It can be sweet, savory, or spicy. The App. Well, just like we said earlier, Galaxy's Edge will be the most immersive land ever to be built. How did Disney achieve this? Well, remember the Play Disney Parks app that was released last year? It will kind of work like a handheld communicator as you explore the land. The app will have four tools you can use to hack the memory of droids, interact with devices, scan and read shipping labels to reveal what's inside cargo containers, translate languages spoken by creatures or signs you can find, and tune to decode secret radio transmissions. It will also provide all types of jobs or games you can choose from. They can take seconds to complete or much longer. These jobs have a purpose. There's a virtual tug-of-war going on between the Resistance and the First Order in Black Spire Outpost, and we will be a part of it. But we can't just press a button and choose a side. The app will tell us if our alliance is with the Resistance, the First Order, or if we're scoundrels, depending on the tasks we do to prove ourselves. We will be entirely judged by our actions, including how we do in our missions. And don't worry about Wi-Fi. The app's main functions are all designed to be used via Bluetooth and location services. The rest. Every little detail at Galaxy's Edge tells a story, and every story happening around us takes place during the current trilogy. But that doesn't mean that the land will never evolve. With new movies and shows coming to the Star Wars universe, the land will change and integrate some of the new stories that will come in the future. Music will also play an essential part in the land, but in a new way. Black Spire Outpost is a real place, so of course, there can't be music playing everywhere all the time. John Williams wrote all the new music that we'll be able to hear inside the attractions and some other places. There will also be many characters from the movies walking around the land, working at the shops like Doc Ondor, who will be inside his store, moving around and working in his very own booth. His mood and interactions will be different based on the events of the day, so it will be difficult to have the same interaction with him twice. Or as we said earlier, we will find Hondo in the Millennium Falcon attraction. He is the second most advanced animatronic character in Disney history. There will be many Easter eggs hiding everywhere in the land, including Pablo Hidalgo's voice being used somewhere in the land itself. And don't worry, Star Tours is not going anywhere. Star Wars Galaxy's Edge will open on May 31st at the Disneyland Resort and on August 29th at Disney's Hollywood Studios at Walt Disney World Resort. At Disneyland, the land will open in two phases. For Phase 1, we'll be able to ride Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run, visit Oga's Cantina, and much more. Then later this year, for Phase 2, Star Wars Rise of the Resistance will open. If you're planning to visit Star Wars Galaxy's Edge at Disneyland Park between May 31st and June 23rd, 2019, you will need a valid theme park admission and a no-cost reservation subject to availability to access the land. And FastPass will not be available for any of the attractions during that time. Galaxy's Edge at Disney's Hollywood Studios will open fully on August 29th. Reservations will not be needed to access the land at that time. Now back to you guys. <laughs>